Hi, and greetings from Master Bazaar. This is a tutorial video of the Avionic Hexaquad controller. What we have in front of us is a Hiller quad, which comes with motors and ESCs. We also have a 7 channel transmitter, plus, we also have a 7 channel receiver with us, which we are going to be using for the setup, and also a 11.11 .11 volt 2200mAh 25C LiPo, and of course, the Avionic Hexaquad controller itself. Now, let us start with unpacking this unit. Now, if you see very carefully, let, let, let me start unpacking it first. Now, in this package, you'll find three units. One is the controller itself. Plus, over and above, you'll find two different type of wires. Now, one of the wire connectors are three single leads, which I'll come back to you later. Yeah, you can see it's in orange, red, and brown. And plus another servo connector which goes to the throttle, which we'll come back to in detail in some time. Now, let us keep this aside and uh, see what this Avionic Hexacord is all about. But the first looks of it, this unit seems to be quite small, compact. And this unit seems to have some two dials, switches. And some markings which is for AER, throttle, S bus, ESC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That means you say to connect to a quad and also to a hexa. And of course, you've got a small slot for the satellite receiver for JR and the spectrum type of receivers. Alright, pretty neat for the looks of that. Let us go ahead and examine this unit a little bit more closely. You've got four switches there it's 1, 2, 3, and 4. The first two correspond, as per the manual, as the flight modes, and the three and four is for the receiver type. I have set my quad here for an X4 type of flight. So, as per the manual, I have to have the first switches on and the second switches off. And I am using a RCB 7 x receiver, and the standard type of using this is uh, both of them three or four are on. Again, let me see on, off, the first two are on and off, the second and third switches which is for the standard type of uh, transmitter receiver which should both the switches should be on. Just for the convenience of explanation, I have taken one of the images from the manual and I have placed it on the video. Let me start from the top left hand side. On the top left hand side you can see three markings which is A, E, R, A stands for the aileron, E for elevator and R for radar. THR stands for throttle. S bus typically is a Futaba S bus receiver if you're operating one of them. And uh, ESC 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These are um, literally the uh, type of ESCs or number of ESCs used on a hexa or on a quad. Quad typically takes in four numbers of ESC and a hexa as the name says a six number of ESC. Now, coming to the right hand side, you will see there's a small button here which is called as the receiver calibration. We'll come and touch base on this in some time later. Just below the RS calibration button, you will see a small dial. This is the flight game. Here you can set the sensitivity gyro. Dial in more, you get a more uh, agile uh, flight. Dial in less, you'll get a more docile flight. Just below that, you have the uh, four switches that we spoke about earlier. Now, the first two switches are literally corresponding to the type of flight that you have. That would be a hexa on a quad. A quad and a hexa can be set across in an I format or an X format, which I will explain it in some time. And the three and four switches correspond to the type of receivers. Now, this hexa quad unit controller that we have here can take in a standard receiver, a S bus receiver, a DSM2 receiver, and a DSMX receiver. We will also cover this in some time later. And finally, of course, you have the LED status, which blinks in a series of different different colors. Let be white, blue, yellow, purple, and each every each and every light that blinks in, it corresponds to a certain uh, certain parameters that you need to set or you have already set, uh, which again is very very detailed and clearly mentioned in the manual. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can set this up. Now you can see uh, from the packet that we opened up earlier, I picked up this wire. Now let me pick up the RG7 receiver. Now channel number three is throttled in the RG7 receiver. 
I'll go and fix the lead here. Now let's just be careful on how we fix it because here you can see the white color, the signal wire is on the top. Yeah, it's clearly marked here, signal is on the top, red is the power and the minus which is the black one is the ground. We are going to fix this on the throttle side, THR of the AVN hexacord. Now just know the orientation that we fix this in. <coughs> In this, I will go ahead and fix the signal at the bottom. That means the white colored wire will be facing the bottom. So a bit tricky. All right. So the white is at the bottom and the black is on the top. And this is important, guys. Otherwise, the uh, unit, the control unit will not work. White, red and the black. All right. Pick up the colored lead that you have now and let's fix this in the AER slot of the support controller I am going to fix my comfort level basically with this that I am going to fix the orange as the aileron the red as the elevator and the R as the red and these just know that all these three wires are the signal wires that should uh, fix in the corresponding slots in the receiver all right I am going to fix the rudder first, that's the uh, brown color wire and in the R37 receiver the signal, signal slot basically is facing on the top so here goes the brown color and the red one is for the elevator that's channel number 2 facing on the top again and the last one is the aileron facing on the top one which is channel 1. Absolutely, yes. Have a look at this again. AER corresponding to channel 1, channel 2 is elevator, channel 3, or rather, sorry, the channel 4 is the rudder. Okay, guys, fantastic. In this section of the video, I've taken an image from the manual. On the left hand side, the portrait is the quad flight mode, the right hand side is the hexa flight mode. Let us focus on the quad flight mode. As you can see in the picture here, you have the I type and the X type in the quad. It's as simple as it is. Where your ESC is uh, appointed and where your motor is mounted. And very importantly in this both this type, what you need to do is uh, you need to determine yourself how you want your uh, quad to be, uh, how you have actually uh, thought your quad should be, the I type or the X type and accordingly you go ahead and fix your ESCs and importantly and very very importantly is uh, your uh, your proper rotations the clockwise and the counterclockwise similar diagram is also for the hexa the I hexa or the X hexa and accordingly determine um, how the motor should be placed and where the ESC should also fix across on your hexa port controller and of course the most important part is the uh, rotation direction of the uh, propellers which is clockwise and counterclockwise. I'm setting up my quad for a X type of configuration here, and uh, importantly, is, uh, I need to show you where the leading edge is. The controller should be facing this side, that means to say it should be pointed towards where the uh, front of the quad is. This becomes the one. Uh, I'll have to fix it up later. But it's all right, let's take the ESC, ESC number one and fix it to the quad controller ESC number one with the signal wire facing down now let's go to the second ESC this is the second ESC and let's fix this second ESC as shown across on the quad controller the third ESC the similar process Okay, and lastly but not the least, we have the fourth ESC. Let's go ahead and fix the final one on the hexa quad controller. Ah, still a bit tight. Okay, this seems to be fine. Here I've taken one of the images from the manual just to show. Uh, how the LEDs, what's the meaning of these LED colors. As soon as you switch on or rather when you power up the core, 
you get a series of colors. You might get a white, you might get a blue, yellow, or a purple. The white means you have bound uh, the, or your, rather your receiver is a standard type of receiver, let it be a Spectrum, or let it be even a Futaba, or Avionic RCB 7X, or Avionic RCB 6i, Flysky, etc, etc. If you get a blue, that means to say your receiver is a S plus, yellow and purple is for DSM2 and DSMX respectively. Now after that, once you get one of those colors, just after, a, maybe within a second, the color changes to uh, maybe again white, blue, yellow and purple. Now, the second phase of the lights actually correspond to the configuration that you have set up on your quad. The white means uh, I type for a quad, blue is X quad, which we actually have uh, in, in the video that I'm showing right now, we have set it to a X type of quad, yellow is for a I hexa, and a purple is a X hexa. Typically in this example that we are showing right now, uh, as soon as we power on, we should see first a white light which is for a standard receiver and then you should switch off and within a second you should actually see a blue color of LED coming in that means to say it is for a X, X, uh, X uh, quad. If it doesn't happen they need to go back and again change your settings. So let's see what happens and uh, how we have set it up. Yeah. Here I've done all my setup. I'll fix my LiPo. I stated earlier as soon as I power on once I switch on the transmitter, you should see a white light and then a blue light. That means that everything is fine. The motors are all fine, we can go ahead and use it. Let's do that. Yes, we get a white and then a blue and then a steady gray. Super. It's all set up. Now I'll go ahead and try running up the motor now. Yeah. Now let me switch it off. That's it guys. Thank you so much for watching the video.